National Assembly discusses submission of EVFTA. And later on, Vietnamese enterprises recover post-pandemic. Hello there and welcome to BizLine, our weekly economic journal on VTV International. I'm Hoàng Hằng and as usual, we will begin with some economic highlights over the past week in Vietnam. The National Assembly Standing Committee continued its session on April the 28th with discussions regarding the approval of the Vietnam-EU Free Trade Agreement or EVFTA and the Investment Protection Agreement or EVIPA. At the meeting, members of the National Assembly Standing Committee strongly agreed on the approval of the EVFTA and EVIPA to create favorable conditions for production and to enhance Vietnam's position in the international arena. They also mentioned that the documentation needs to be detailed to ensure a smooth approval process. The EVFTA will be submitted to the National Assembly for ratification at the National Assembly's ninth session, which takes place on May the 20th. Speaking at a meeting with State Capital Investment Corporation, or SCIC, on the direction of the expansion strategy on April the 29th, Deputy Prime Minister Chung Ho Bing emphasized that the SCIC should actively invest on the basis of preserving and developing state capital in accordance with the law. The SCIC has been requested to research investments in areas such as technology, digital economy, energy, banking and finance, and key infrastructure projects, apart from the tasks assigned by the government. The SCIC representatives said that the SCIC wants to become an investor for the government and that investment activities will be one of the two core businesses of the corporation. Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc has allowed businesses to resume rice exports from May the 1st. Seizing this opportunity, many rice processing and trading businesses in the Mekong Delta region are busy preparing goods and resuming export contracts. During peak days, there were more than 55,000 tons of rice stuck at Mỹ Thới port, of which 30,000 tons of rice is now under custom procedures to be exported to Southeast Asian countries. The elimination of export quotas is stimulating businesses to expand their markets and revive after the pandemic. The U.S. Department of Commerce, or DOC, has significantly lowered anti-dumping duties on trophies products from Vietnam, according to the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Specifically, the tax imposed on Vietnamese trophies export businesses is set at 15 cents per kilogram instead of 1.37 US dollar per kilogram for enterprises agreeing to cooperate with the DOC. For businesses which are not exempt by the DOC, the tax will still remain at 2.39 US dollar per kilogram. The Ministry of Industry and Trade will coordinate with other ministries, related agencies and associations to take necessary action to protect the rights and interests of the domestic traffic industry. On Monday afternoon, Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc requested the authorities to immediately remove barriers and create favorable conditions for enterprises exporting medical masks. Accordingly, enterprises are entitled to export medical masks without having to depend on the Ministry of Health's purchase of this item for the National Reserve. The Prime Minister asked Ministry of Health to be in charge and monitor the quality of medical masks. Relevant ministries were taxed with asking the government to amend Resolution No. 20 to promote the export of medical masks, protective clothes and medical equipment. From May the 1st to the 5th, China's Gongxi province will hold custom clearance for imported goods by Vietnam's Tân Thanh. Cộng Nam and Chi Ma border gates in Lạng Sơn as China enters a public holiday for International Labor Day. According to Lạng Sơn's Department of Industry and Trade, this long public holiday in China will affect the export of agricultural products from Vietnam. To ensure a smooth export process and avoid a backlog, the department asked its provincial counterparts 
to closely follow updates and adjust their own plan accordingly. On the occasion of April the 4th and May the 1st holidays, many localities have started to welcome back tourists after a long time closed to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Many provinces and cities such as Quảng Nam, Phú Yên, Huế, Phú Quốc and Đà Lạt have opened tourist accommodation activities. Tourist sites, cultural and historical relics, as well as scenic places have been allowed to return to operations but must comply with regulations such as wearing a mask, washing hands and maintaining safe distance when in contact with others. Also on this occasion, tourist attractions and accommodation establishments are also offering many attractive promotions and discounts. Those are some highlights in our economic scene. Up next, we will take a look at the efforts of Vietnamese enterprises in overcoming challenges to thrive post-COVID-19 pandemic in our crosstalk. The goal of reviving the economy post-pandemic is perhaps not only a priority of the government, but also an urgent need for business. Why? Because it is a matter of thriving or dying. Without relying on the government support packages, Vietnamese businesses are also making efforts to overcome difficulties. This is especially important because a healthy economy is made up of many healthy businesses. With an open economy like Vietnam, it is inevitable to stay away from external fluctuations. And the solution is to strengthen the health of the domestic economy, which is built upon great enterprises. Therefore, we would like to talk about the efforts of Vietnamese enterprises in overcoming challenges to thrive post-pandemic. Hopefully, we would be able to spread a positive message to the domestic business sector and help the world understand more about a positive and cell-reliant Vietnam. The COVID-19 pandemic is regarded as a health crisis that has affected a number of countries. It has hit the global economy in general and Vietnam in particular, expanding its impact on various sectors. According to the General Statistics Office, the agriculture, forestry, fishery sector grew at only 0.08% in the first quarter of this year. The industry and construction sector also witnessed a low growth rate of 5.15%. Meanwhile, the service sector, which accounts for the largest proportion of the economy, recorded a growth of 3.27%, half of the last quarter's growth rate. As Vietnam's economy has high openness, disruptions in supply chains due to the COVID-19 pandemic have affected the country's trade with many of its major trade partners. Statistics show that total trade turnover reduced by 0.7% in the first quarter. Enterprises have also faced difficulties, having been forced to temporarily close down and in turn decreasing the revenues. Therefore, Vietnam's GDP growth rate in the first quarter of 2020 reach only 3.82% against the previous quarter. That is the lowest rate recorded since 2011. And our guest today is Mr. Le Zui Bing, CEO of Economica Vietnam. Uh, well, thank you for being here with us. Yeah, thank you. First of all, what are the difficulties and challenges Vietnamese enterprises are facing due to COVID-19? The Vietnam economy is uh, a very open economy. We, the export and export of Vietnamese economy is almost double of our GDP. And uh, the business sector in Vietnam is therefore very much uh, dependent on the export market and the import market also. And uh, we need to import in order to produce for the domestic market and then export. We need to rely on export market in order to export our service and product. We can see that the tourism sector is the first to suffer. Mm -hmm. And then we can see that the transportation is uh, suffering from the pandemic as well. And then some sector that is relying on the import for export. First, the textile sector and then the leather and, uh, and, and industry also suffering. And they are also suffering because we are rely a lot on the import for exporting. And now we can see that the export market for Vietnamese enterprise in Europe, in the US, in Japan, and in ASEAN market are also suffering. Many enterprises is now laying off 
uh, workers or they are having a temporary layoff of the workers and the revenue uh, is also being affected. And COVID-19 uh, uh, is no exception uh, for any business. So business from all sectors, from the FDI uh, sector, who is more resilient to the crisis, is also suffering. But then we can see that the state-owned enterprise is also suffering. And they are predicting that they would lose about uh, 15 uh, billion US dollars this year in revenue. That is for the SOE sector, who is huge, who is uh, a bet better prepared for the crisis. But more than that, yeah, 750,000 private sector enterprise, especially the SME, the micro enterprise, are suffering. And the micro business, who is in the informal sector, is suffering the most. They immediately lose the revenue, they immediately lose the profit, they immediately lose the, all the income for them. So that has a huge impact on the, uh, on the enterprise sector in Vietnam for all sectors. How does COVID-19 impact business operation um, in Vietnam? So it has caused a lot of disruption in the production of the business uh, community. And there is also the disruption in the logistics uh, supply chains and they cannot get access to the inputs that is needed for the production and the export from, uh, that is needed from outside, for instance, the export that is needed uh, from Korea, from the US, from China and also from other part of the world coming to Vietnam is also not available anymore. So for all these reasons, and it has caused a lot of disruption in the production, in the delivery of services of the business in Vietnam. So we can see that the, in the last um, three months, we see a lot of disruption like this in, across the business community. With that being said, how do you think Vietnamese businesses are coping uh, and responding to COVID-19 at the moment? I think that's after the first uh, few weeks and uh, Vietnamese uh, business was shocked. I think that uh, there was a panic. But uh, after a while, after just only a few weeks, we can see that many of the uh, business in Vietnam have been calmed down and they started to see the new strategy for them. They see that they need to thrive or die. As you mm -hmm. said, yeah. So it is very, very clear that is uh, for the business sector. It is very clear that they have to choose either to go, uh, to go on, or they have to to stop. Many of them have been uh, back to normal. Normal here that is not like a normal as it used uh, that used to be. Mm -hmm. But now normal is that because they are back uh, to the normal thinking, normal mindset. They need to work on a new strategy. They need to work harder. They need to find the new way of doing business. They have to find a new market. They have to find the new clients. They have to find the new ways of delivering the services and production. COVID-19 has put enterprises in a new normal state. And to set a strong foothold in this new normal, enterprises have come up with not so normal strategies, or in other words, very creative ones. So let's find out what are they. This is a medical max production line that X20, a company under the Ministry of Defense, has just launched. This line can produce 200 masks per minute, while similar products in the market can only produce 100 to 120 masks per minute. As a reputable government company under the Ministry of Defense, Right from the early days when COVID-19 broke out, X20 was responsible for producing antibacterial cloth masks to supply to the whole army. Following the evolution of COVID-19 closely, realizing that the demand for medical masks is also very high, X20 quickly developed new lines to produce medical masks. Để tham gia vào cái công việc để sản xuất khẩu trang y tế để mà cho nhân dân chống dịch và cũng là giúp quốc gia có cái nguồn khẩu trang dự trữ nếu trong thời gian mà dịch nó có thể phức tạp hơn nữa và chúng tôi cũng sẽ tích cực sản xuất với cái số lượng đảm bảo để mà khẩu trang có thể tham gia vào quá trình xuất khẩu đi nước ngoài. Notably speaking, the medical max production line that X20 chose is a product made in Vietnam by Vietnamese engineers. 
This helps shed light how smaller enterprises, acting as subcontractors of bigger ones, apply creativity and determination to seize business opportunities from COVID-19. COVID-19 đã là một cái xúc tác rất mạnh mẽ từ cái nhu cầu của an sinh, từ cái nhu cầu của chính Việt Nam và từ cái nhu cầu của quốc tế. Thì chúng tôi đã vào cuộc ngay, chúng tôi có một cái cơ hội mới, vận hội mới, nó là cái sản phẩm mà đáp ứng đang cái nhu cầu rất cao. Và chúng tôi thì đang xúc tiến các cái cuộc tư vấn bán hàng để làm sao có thể đưa cái sản phẩm máy của Việt Nam đến thị trường châu Âu và Mỹ. The decision to make a medical max assembly line comes from the fact that the enterprise is capable of making components that can replace unreliable imported ones. The company later on develops and produces the whole machine and owns the technology. The cooperation between these two Vietnamese enterprises has shown creativity as well as solidarity to overcome difficulties brought about by COVID-19. Now we have just listened to a story of a military-based enterprises uh, with a scale of 3,000 people. Do you have any comments about how this business has been responding to COVID-19? This is a very good example on how Vietnamese enterprises have been uh, trying to be back to normal and trying to um, stabilize themselves after the shock and they, what we call the aftershock uh, therapy. And they need to be back to normal and that, is, that shows the entrepreneurship of the leaders of the company. We can see that he has been working harder, working on the strategy and working on the new uh, tactic for the company, working on the new product of the company, how to keep the company to be afloat and how to keep the workers uh, to be on the same production and how to reorganize the production and how to work on the new product and how to improve the management living in such a difficulty. So this is the spirit of the Vietnamese entrepreneur. We uh, can see that in many Vietnamese enterprises. We have mentioned the concept of the new normal and uh, we also understand that different people may have different views or different understanding of what is the new normal is. So in your opinion, how should the concept of new normal for such a big enterprise like this be understood? The new normals here means that we have to live with the COVID-19 until the vaccine for it is found. And also in the world, because we are very um, integrated into the world, and we have to, new, uh, to see what is the new normalcy that is being set up in the world. We can see that recently many countries, for example, like uh, in the G20 or in the G7 economies and the big economy, they are thinking about uh, reshaping the global supply chains to make it safer. They don't want to be dependent on one single source. So there would be a new normalcy in the supply chain, a new normalcy in economy, uh, the global economy to be set up. So that means that Vietnam have to find a way in this new normalcy in the global economy. And for Vietnam to be there in a safe way, in a better value added uh, uh, ladder uh, for, of the global supply chain, that means a lot for Vietnamese enterprise. Vietnamese enterprise have to find their position in this new normalcy. There would be new opportunity that is being opened up. For example, like uh, there would be new op market opportunities. There would be new products that is demanded by the economy that is uh, recovering from the pandemic. And then they need to have a new product, new services. So it first trickled out to the larger company like the one that we are, we are seeing. And then it can also be trickled out further to the smaller enterprise who is supplying to this larger company who is based in Vietnam. What strategy should Vietnamese businesses have to survive and succeed in this new normal established post-pandemic? I'm sure that it's not uh, only the strongest uh, enterprise that survive in this case, but the one who is most adaptable. And that is the chance for the enterprise who is most adaptable to the new market opportunities that was given by the domestic market. And the domestic market would also have a new demand for their service and for their products. We can see that they are also introducing new products. The startup's main products are electric vehicles. Recently, it has developed a new product, an automatic sanitizer dispenser. 
As part of its business plan amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the company has worked with two other doctors from Hanoi University of Science and Technology and the Vietnam Academy of Science and Technology to initiate and design the machine. Without touching anything, people can disinfect their hands in public spaces thanks to the machine's infrared sensor. Thường là cái cái bình xịt và chúng ta phải chạm vào cái cái bình rửa tay, đúng không? Chạm vào cái nút bấm thì nếu mà bấm xịt ra và như vậy thì là nó lại nảy sinh ra một cái vấn đề là tất cả mọi người đều chạm vào một cái nút. Thế thì giả sử mà có một người có một cái dính virus vi khuẩn the company's representative said that the difficult part lies in mass producing the product with the price lower than other similar products available in the market. Due to the pandemic, some of its input material suppliers in China have temporarily closed their production. Meanwhile, the company remained determined to finish the design and provide it to the market within at most three weeks to meet the demand. Chúng tôi yêu cầu thời gian và và số lượng chúng tôi yêu cầu thì nó cũng quá gấp gáp rất là khó để mà 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 đối tác có thể đáp ứng được rất may là chúng tôi thì cũng có những kinh nghiệm trong cái trong cái việc mà phát triển cái chuỗi cung ứng à, từ cái từ cái từ cái việc mà phát triển sản phẩm của chúng tôi là là ô tô xe máy đấy thì chúng tôi tận vận dụng vào và chúng tôi có thể giải quyết được with this strategy, the startup received orders of 500 units after just about three to four days it introduced the product to the market. Besides the machine, the company has also developed its own hand sanitizer product based on World Health Organization's recommended formula to ensure quality. Sản phẩm mà có được cái khảo sát đánh giá về các cái tiêu chí liên quan đến an toàn và chất lượng là điều mà người tiêu dùng quan tâm nhiều nhất. Do đó là chúng tôi làm cái công tác này rất là kỹ, các cái khảo sát liên quan đến khả năng diệt khuẩn cũng như là đánh giá về một số các cái Adjusting marketing plans, cutting labor costs, and adjusting product lines are what Select Motors is doing in order not to only survive but also adapt to the new normal due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Khả năng xoay sở, cái khả năng ứng phó, tính thích nghi với cái hoàn cảnh là cực kỳ quan trọng đối với doanh nghiệp. Nhiều lúc có thể là bất ngờ, nhưng mà nếu như mình có cái tấm thế, mình xem đấy là một cái sự bình thường mới. Bất bình thường chỉ là bình thường mới. Thì, thì mình có thể là giải quyết được. So we just watched a story of a startup and how they chose to respond to COVID-19. What do you think of the founder's decision to uh, move away from manufacturing electric scooters to manufacturing automatic hand washers? That is a good example for the business uh, being adaptable. Adaptable to the new demand from the market adaptable to the new requirement in the production. So there's a demand in this uh, hygiene product and the, the product that serves the high demand of the market now in Vietnam and elsewhere. So that is a very good decision that uh, the founder have made. He tried to be the best uh, in adapting to the new requirement. So that is a good indication that he will succeed. And that is a good example for others that we need to be adaptable to the new environment, to the new market conditions, to the new uh, demand from the market. Why keeping our cost uh, competency? We should not diversify too much from that. And uh, we should uh, build uh, on the new uh, product, new market, based on our strengths, based on our core competencies. We should not uh, all diversify to the new products uh, or the production because uh, the demand can change very very fast. So what do you think about the new normal for this kind of startup? A startup is uh, the one who is in the business community and among the enterprise are often the most innovative. And this time of the pandemic and this time of the crisis, we need a lot of the enterprise like this. The one who come with the ideas that was never tested before, the product that was never tested before, that was never in the market before. But this time of the, of the crisis, of this uh, pandemic, we need one who really uh, can, do, can find a new way of doing things. What do you think um, the strategy for startup at this scale to survive and succeed in such a new normal state post-pandemic? 
They are facing a lot of difficulties now mm -hmm. during the pandemic, uh, during the crisis time, and the risk-taking mentality is get, is being reduced. They would be facing a lot of difficulties, not like in the growing economy that many venture fund is ready to put money into mm -hmm. their startup uh, or business. Now they're facing more difficulty. So again. Mm -hmm. They need to be double the effort again, even cheaper the efforts in order to show that the business idea is workable and is uh, needed by the by the market. Many other venture funds may also look around to have a new business idea because the money is still there. The financial uh, system is still do, working well. This is not like the previous uh, financial crisis. The financial system is working relatively well at this moment, especially in Vietnam. So there's no reason for us to be worried that there's no fund for the good business idea. So if the good business idea is there, the good business plan and the startup can also easily get uh, funded. COVID-19 is an unprecedented phenomenon, a test of survival for the business sector. It does not care about borders, nationality, scale or business models. Large-scale state-owned enterprises or private enterprises or Vietnamese startups have their own strategies to deal with COVID-19. Trong những lúc khó khăn thì uh, nếu chúng ta phát huy được nội lực, chúng ta ông cha ta thường có câu là nước xa không cứu được lửa gần. Nên không có gì hơn là chúng ta sẽ sử dụng những nguồn nhân lực của những doanh nghiệp Việt Nam, của những con người Việt Nam. À, đối với doanh nghiệp Việt Nam thì uh, bản thân chúng ta là phải là tự cường, doanh nghiệp phải là người chủ động, phải tự tư duy, phải tự sáng tạo để uh, mỗi cái khó khăn đến thì chúng ta có một cái tư duy để vượt qua nó. Thì uh, với những cái gì mà chúng ta đã làm thì chúng tôi nghĩ rằng là điều uh, tất cả mọi điều trong tình huống như hiện nay kể cả Covid là cái điều khó khăn nhất cho Việt Nam và cho các nước trên thế giới. Tư duy tốt thì cũng sẽ vượt qua giống như chúng ta đang chế ngự Covid, Việt Nam đang thắng, đang đang giành được những cái thành quả chế ngự Covid. Doanh nghiệp Việt Nam hãy tư duy như vậy và chắc chắn là chúng ta sẽ vượt qua. Lúc này cái trách nhiệm của một doanh nghiệp, đặc biệt là doanh nghiệp khởi nghiệp ấy, thì là mình phải đương đầu khó khăn, giải quyết khó khăn. Thì quá để mình mới mang lại những cái giá trị cho xã hội và quá đấy thì mình mới gọi là có những cái lợi ích về mặt tài chính cho cho bản thân mình. These are the messages that three representatives of three different business models sent to the Vietnamese business community. By concrete action, they conveyed a very positive message about a resilient and creative Vietnam. Thank you for being here with us. Once again, we would like to highlight the point of our guest today. COVID-19 pandemic helps businesses to identify their strengths and weaknesses, thereby creating new antibodies for enterprises and the economy. It helps the immune system of enterprises at the micro level and the economy at the macro level become stronger, better able to cope with the difficulties and the challenges in the future. It will be a lost opportunity if these antibodies are not really promoted by strong actions. For example, enterprises may do things that they have never done before or hesitated to do. New business models have to be tested. New markets need to be explored. All mindsets need to be removed. Only with that mentality that we can turn risks into opportunities and let COVID-19 be remembered in history, not only with gloomy images, and numbers, but also with the positive opportunities it brings to the Vietnamese economy. And that also wrap up this edition of BizLine. In the meantime, you can log on to our official website at vtv4.vtv.vn or visit our YouTube channel at vtv4go. Once again, thanks for tuning in and goodbye from Hanoi.